good evening everyone uh, originally frank was supposed to uh, present this case uh, anyway i had a uh, short time getting uh, prepared and uh, since because of that i don't have a uh, kind of a slide to show but i'll try to explain the patient as clearly as possible and this would be actually a, a kind of a negative case anyway i'll go to the history and uh, then you will understand what is the case this patient was uh, a teacher 45 years old uh, presenting um, with erectile dysfunction he he was a t this uh, this he came to me about 2 years back um the, the main problem was erectile dysfunction so originally um, he, he didn't have any other uh, previous illnesses ex except for uh, mild hypertension which he uh, uh, and he was treated with hct and uh, anyway as you might all uh, decide I, my main differential diagnosis was uh, diabetes Uh, because of that so i did the uh, the investigations accordingly but everything uh, was negative hba1c and postprandial blood sugars were no, uh, normal so then working on the uh, other differential diagnosis uh, he was 45 years uh, married late actually about i think it was about 2 years back he had married and he didn't have children so i thought it was anxiety and maybe dep depression that he was uh, getting this one uh, the uh, symptom and he was non alcoholic and uh, because of the erectile dysfunction sometimes uh, caused by alcohol and it was also negative and um, the other thing was um, he was on uh, hct so going through the history and uh, investigations um, there was nothing to point out uh, any cause for uh, apparently um, for his uh, condition um, because uh, most of the time um, this uh, present uh, erectile dysfunction comes as a presenting uh, complaint of of diabetes uh, peripheral neuropathy uh, and when i went through literature i came to uh, understand that there is um, hct causes erectile dysfunction uh, and on uh, together that we, uh, i mean beta blockers also se seem to uh, cause erectile dysfunction anyway this was a rare cause a rare case uh, that um, originally i thought this was because of diabetes diabetes is presenting um, as a um, presenting um, with presenting with uh, erectile dysfunction but it was not so uh, but you usually i had uh, recently more recently i had uh, one patient with who came with impotence uh, and uh, blood sugars were high and there were two other patients who came with actually balanitis uh, who had uh, high blood sugars so this is one of the recent most recent cases and actually uh, the original patient uh, later um, his wife was also normal and he, they were able to uh, have a conception and they were okay uh, with bit of counseling and uh, i i had to omit um, hct um, actually i had uh, um, um, one of the vps uh, that was the case but i think uh, this is a case but uh, when i was given this uh, this uh, topic peripheral neuropathy in diabetes and gp practice i thought this would be a kind of a subtle case that might come on our way uh where we think that it is diabetes but it came negative um with the investigation and uh, history thank you thank you very much uh, prasanna i think uh, uh this is uh, our aim is to have a interactive session and i'm grateful that one of the gps did the presentation is there anything that you would like to know yes uh Dr. Nandana Dikmatugada doesn't need any introduction. He's the consultant physician attached to the Homagama Hospital. And I'm glad that uh, I associated him before he went for training in uh, Australia. And uh, I'm so glad that he came back from uh, Hambantara to Homagama. And he has a very caring attitude towards patients. 
and uh, who has uh, obliged today to come and talk on uh, the the same subject. So we'll ask uh, Dr. Dikmanth to uh, give his lecture. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I should apologize you for the delay. Uh, as this is general practitioner's lecture, I thought uh, the people will not come at the time of seven. Uh, and uh, then I want to thank uh, Dr. Vijay Singh and the uh, uh, College of General Practitioners for giving me this opportunity. Actually, this is, um, uh, if it is going to be a le lecture, this uh, formed one, it will be a long time. I'm just uh, go through. And uh, first, uh, Dr. Prasanna's uh, presentation, um, when you think of erectile dysfunction, actually uh, 70 to 80 percent are psychogenic. Then uh, these drugs come. Uh, then you get this uh, diabetes or any other neurological things. And uh, hormonal dysfunction actually uh, in, uh, low in the list. Even the recommendation uh, from this uh, endocrinologist, they don't uh, recommend uh, this hormone replacement testosterone. But uh, they say you can check the testosterone level in these patients. Uh, so HCT also, uh, as uh, the, the senior doctor said, uh, I also not had heard of much, right? Uh, maybe really it can cause, right? Right, okay. So we'll uh, go about this diabetic neuropathy. The, before that, uh, what is this diabetes? Uh, so we have failed, actually. Diabetes, uh, the WHO warned 65 years ago we are facing an epidemic. What is today? It is still same. We are still same. So we have no way improved. And the Sri Lankan rate, when you compare to the world rates, usually 10% population, we are nearing around 16, uh, like just like 20%. So we have different programs, all these things, but we have failed. Then this thing comes, diabetes equal to MI. Say, this is the question I asked. Devi Varyak Dunnot, Guli Udadala, Illana, Devi Ediavad, heart attack. Same, both are same. If you get heart attack, uh, diabetes both same. Why this all this comes? Microvascular, macrovascular, and metabolic complication. This is the main uh, thing actually we have to focus. Uh, most of the time you get the patient, they ask, I don't have symptoms, I don't have anything, why you are giving me drugs? Only the blood sugar is high. But we have to focus on these complications. If you don't treat, you will end up heart attack, renal failure, uh, stroke or whatever, and metabolic complications like DKO, uh, uh, hypoglycemia. So these are the just a few things to go for the diabetes. Then uh, when we think of uh, diabetic neuropathies, I am not going to talk about all the things. Uh, <clears throat> this results from mainly the, due to the microvascular injury and uh, you know the small vessels uh, on the nerves, vasa nervorum, they can get affected, then uh, you get the neuropathy. The common things are third nerve palsy. You might see a isolated common, uh, the third nerve palsy uh, due to diabetes, uh, just because of this uh, my, my changes, uh, vascular changes. Then you get mononeuropathy, that means only one nerve can be affected, then diabetic amyotrophy, then painful polyneuropathies. Uh, basically, uh, anywhere in the body, uh, you can get this affected. So what are the signs and symptoms? Uh, so today topic, basically, we are talking, going to talk about this old peripheral nerves. That means uh, pain fibers, motor fibers, and autonomic. So this is what I said uh, can affect any organ because uh, all the organs are in, uh, uh, innovated. The symptoms usually uh, develop gradually over years, you know that, and it's very difficult to control also. The symptoms are long-term ones. So the pathogenesis, I'm not going to in details. There are actually four factors. Uh, these are the things they say. The microvascular disease, because nerve function depend on the blood vessel, and blood vessel function depend on nerve. So they are uh, both uh, supported. So 
microvascular damage can cause. Then this advanced glycated products, protein C and all this, they, they are the pathogenical things. So the symptoms we should know uh, when the patient comes with these symptoms. So numbness and tingling of the extremities, that is the most common thing. And uh, they say disease the, or they feel abnormal. It's not normal. And erectile dysfunction is the most important topic for most of the male patients. And uh, all these others are also symptoms of thing. So if you go through uh, urinary incontinence, facial, mouth and eyelid drooping, vision changes, muscle weakness, all these are maybe non-specific. In a diabetic patient, they come with all this. So you think it is non-specific. There's something called anogasmia. Usually you get in uh, females also, they don't get the orgasm. So these are the symptoms. Uh, then this is the final result of peripheral neuropathy. You end up with the neuropathic ulcer, then can end up as an amputation even, right? So the other thing as doctors, uh, we should know how to diagnose it. Then we go through by the symptoms. So most common thing is the pain in the leg or foot. Then the appearance. If you look at a neuropathic leg and a normal leg, actually there's a difference. The normal luster of the skin is gone. Uh, so then you can check the, uh, this uh, reflexes might be absent because the sensation is not going back. So you can't complete the reflex circle. Uh, then uh, you can check with this uh, vibration. Uh, I think you are familiar with this uh, monofilament. Uh, actually, it is available most of the, I think even in the pharmaceutical and they are supplying. So you can check the results of this uh, sensation. This is how you check it. Uh, the patient should be lying down. Uh, the toe should be pointed towards the uh, roof, and uh, you check most prominent points, this big toe, third toe, and uh, fifth one. So same metatarsal bodies, those are the earliest places you get the uh, peripheral neuropathy. So this filament is some kind of a plastic uh, string-like thing. When you press, uh, it will bend like a C. If you don't get the pain when it bends, that means he has uh, the neuropathy there. So that is how you check it. So what they say is you have to combine with the reflex and uh, this uh, filament test. Then you can go for the nerve conduction test if you think what it is and you want to clarify more. Uh, the test actually not really correlate with the severity of the disease. Patient may be having a severe peripheral neuropathy, but you might not get the uh, positive results as such. Uh, then the, our most important thing is to uh, go for the treatment. How to treat it? They say the tight glucose control is the uh, most important aspect. You can reduce the pain and other symptoms as supportive treatment. Uh, as you know, you know, when we get a patient, we can start different drugs. If you diagnose peripheral neuropathy, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, this serotonin, norepinephrine, reuptake inhibitors. We'll talk a bit on this. Uh, what they say is TCA and traditional anticonvulsants better for short-term pain relief. Uh, we'll go through the drugs a bit uh, later. Uh, the combination what they suggest is gabapentin plus uh, this no triptyline. We are not using much. Uh, now, most of the things we are doing as the Americans say, you know, uh, whole world like. So, only three drugs approved by the FDA. They say antidepressant duloxetine, anticonvulsant pregabalin, and long acting opioid uh, tapindadol. I think it's not available here. So basically, we can use duloxetine and pregabalin. And uh, some recommend uh, treating with patches also. 
there is some help from this and other things, uh, the supportive things, exercise test and all this. Uh, actually, this part we don't uh, take much care. So we get a diabetic patient, we treat diabetes part, neuropathy with the drugs, but we don't refer to a physiotherapist. Uh, actually, this also has uh, some kind of uh, help to improve their condition. They use different methods, heat, therapeutic ultrasound, all this. And uh, the pelvic floor muscle exercises can improve sexual dysfunction. So it's not actually practiced. I don't know whether our physiotherapists are conversant with these techniques. Uh, it's a helpful method. So tricyclic antidepressant, what are we are using? May basically, amitriptyline, uh, you know, commonly use amitriptyline, imipramine, all this group. Then the problem comes, they have side defects, especially if you are using in a patient with cardiac condition. So cardiac to toxicity, you know that amitriptyline usually, we don't like to give a bigger dose uh, for a patient with ischemic heart disease. So because that can cause fatal arrhythmias, and uh, say if you are using 25 milligrams or maybe 12.5, that's all right. Uh, other two groups, they have desipramine and nortriptyline, less side defects, but we are using amitriptyline, which is commonly available. Then this uh, selective serotonin, norepinephrine reactive inhibitors, the receptor inhibitors, they are the duloxetine and venlafaxine. They target both these receptors, but this usual SSRI, uh, they are not helpful, like fluoxetine, citalopram, and all this. So if you are going to use, we can use tricyclic antidepressant or SSNRI, that is duloxetine or venlafaxine. Right. Uh, gabapentin, uh, you know, this anti-epileptic group, uh, we can use gabapentin or pregabalin. That is the first line treatment for painful neuropathy. Then the main side defect is sedation, right? It's uh, actually very effective. When you start, they get, they can't sleep. What I usually advise is them to take only maybe five days or six days. We don't write for months. And they take 